Now, from our clinical results here at the centre, the overwhelming number of patients are brought into total remission um, within several months. So this trial had another wart, and that is that it allowed only 16 weeks. Initially it was going to be 12, and John Herman Taylor pushed the trial out to 16 when he was asked to comment about its design. We probably be, should be looking at 26 weeks, and then measure response to remission. For we are not turning off inflammation. Here, this therapy is suppressing growth of bacteria, which divide every few months or years. So I think the design flaw is the major one. Secondly, Clofazamine was used at half strength, and the capsules largely did not dissolve. In fact, there was a letter to the editor written later, and the explanation from the, uh, from the authors was that they did factor in these results later, but the numbers were too, slow to be, too, too low to be factored in, so that's not a correct result. So overall, the trial was, in, if you want to put it, the mistrial, which in spite of all its warts, gave us the highest remission rate of any published Crohn's trial, 66%. Well, I guess we touched on that, that some about the antibiotics just altering the floor, what we haven't seen the same results with those antibiotics that, that don't sure. treat MAP. The question of whether it's just the flora bacteria, well, who cares if it makes patients better? Who cares about the mechanism? That's point one. But secondly, 12 different trials have shown that antibiotics do not heal uh, Crohn's like this in spite of them being randomized. So the flora question is closed. It's not a flora alteration. Um, you sort of touched on this, but what we have. Uh, what what are the strongest pieces of evidence that implicate MAP uh, as at least the cause of some Crohn's disease? Uh, do you think that MAP is the sole cause, or is Crohn's a syndrome with multiple causes, um, and MAP is just one of those? It's causes. a very good way to, to develop a view of what this thing is turning out to be, because even today's answers are not the final answers, but there are a lot of pieces to the jigsaw puzzle. One of the strongest ones is that we have so many Crohn's animals, called Yoni's disease. Um, all around us, cattle farms, more than 60% um, have mycobacterium avium paratuberculosis infecting the, the bowels of cattle, which produces a disease which is not dissimilar, and, and in fact histologically quite, quite similar to Crohn's disease. That in itself had caused Dalziel back in 1913 to say, I think this is a mycobacterial disease. And he was right, right from the start. So this piece of the puzzle is, is the most powerful piece that we have. Secondly, it is now an incontrovertible fact that Crohn's is caused by MAP because of Cox postulates. Uh, no one questions that. Uh, for example, we now will treat leprosy with anti-mycobacterial drugs, even though it's never been proven to be caused by mycobacterium leprae. Cox postulates are unfulfilled. Why are they unfulfilled? Because we can't culture mycobacterium leprae. At best we can grow them in footpads of mice, but we cannot reproduce Cox postulates. So we have double standards here. Thirdly, we have trials with, with antibiotics that do make the, uh, the Crohn's heal, and yet MAP is not present in as many patients with, with colitis as it is with Crohn's. So there, is, uh, there are other bits and pieces that add, add to it. Um, that's what if, if MAP doesn't cause all the Crohn's, what are the other possibilities? Is it uh, the adherent invasive coli, viruses, other mycobacteria, uh, toxigenic bacterioid fragilis, or Staphylococcus aureus? Yeah, I mean, there, there are no good answers, but generally speaking, it has to be a chronic infection. E. coli may be a mediator that allows MAP to enter, that's been the recent understanding of it. Um, then Eremonas is, is a potential one. Mycobacterium avium is present in all of our bowels. You can stain it and see it, and perhaps, as it does in HIV patients, cause chronic diarrhea. Um, maybe it is a cause in a small percentage, but it will respond to the anti-MAP therapy as well. Um, the others you mentioned, viruses, there are very few chronic viral illnesses of the colon. There's no sections in the textbooks even except for HIV. So I don't think viruses play a role. Fungi, possible, unlikely, would not be responding to anti-MAP anti therapy in those who are negative for MAP. So I think 
we probably have to settle for something like Eremonis, for which there is some evidence, which also responds to anti-map, and possibly MA, microbacteria behaving. Uh, well, yeah, and when it, it's sort of confounding the the data and all the research when when people are trying to say that well, if you don't find it in 100 percent of patients, then it's clearly not the cause. But it could easily just be the case that uh, no, there's that's, that's there's, there's a subset that's yeah. that's that's you know map caused, and then for those there's another, and that. Uh, maybe they should just recognize that there is a group yeah. that is map infected and could get better with, with well that, map it, this that question i think there requires a lot more reading by by people who ask that sort of question um let's just get one thing straight about a sister infection mycobacterium leprae between zero and 14 percent of patients you can detect in, in leprae leprae in and yet they all have leprosy especially in uh, tuberculosis leprosy and other porcine microbial disease so there are models of disease where we can't see the bugs because our tech methods of detection are so poorly developed. So this is not an argument that just because you can't see it, it's not there. Okay. Absence of proof is not proof of absence. Uh, why might we not always find MAP in Crohn's disease patients uh, in their blood tissues or looking for it in the microscope yeah. or trying to find antibodies? This is not really my field, but from peripheral reading, map detection is very, very difficult. A, because it's there in low numbers. PCR is the best method, but uh, even within the same laboratory, it's just difficult to find it uh, in, in similar specimens from same patients, uh, because the numbers are low and it's just very hard to, uh, to, to get the numbers up for the PCR. Culturing is better, but it takes such a long time. Uh, antibodies, there are some good antibodies but they don't correlate and I think we need to um, compare that with for example chlamydia. Uh, chlamydia antibodies may be elevated in many people but chlamydia may not be there at all. So um, I don't think that um, we can judge one infection by the stanzas of, an, of, an, of another infection. Uh, we can now detect in up to 90% of homogenized large volume tissue what we could not detect back in the 50s. So it does state that our technology is improving but that is one of the most difficult areas in MAP uh, and Crohn's in that the detection really needs to be improved. Um, I guess we could go uh, related to that question could other things like uh, Dr. Greenstein and Dr. Collins' recent work showing that some of the classical drugs have activity against MAP in vitro. Could that be explaining some of the uh, f failure to detect on PCR? Well, that, that's a very important question. If we are collecting specimens, and we were collecting when we first started uh, detecting MAP here, um, we got a detection rate of around 20-30% until we doubled the size of our specimens and uh, by that stage we still didn't know what Greenstein had written about in Collins. So in other words, if a patient is on salazapyrin or in uh, taking imuran or taking methotrexate, uh, then you may not be able to detect the bacteria because they're taking drugs that suppress its growth. So that's a very valid point. Uh, there, are there doubters that doubt the Cox postulates have been fulfilled? Uh, no, most people don't know about the Cox postulates. Most physicians that I ask, and when they're shown the papers, they say, oh, wow, I didn't know, can I have a copy? Yeah. Yeah. No one doubts that, which is the factual proof of causality. Yeah. And then... Uh, In, even Steve Hanauer wrote on his, one of his editorials that until Cox postulates were, were um, uh, satisfied for helicobacter, no one believed it. That's a quotable paper. So once he finds out that Cox postulates for Crohn's have been satisfied, uh, when he reads that paper, he will also know that it's been proven. And then uh, Frederick's and Roman's guidelines, they just strengthen? Yes, that, that well, those guidelines were developed for, for bugs that, that we couldn't prove with Cox, and, and they also have been satisfied for MAP and Crohn's, so here is another layer of proof. Uh, 